everyone. In this video, I'm going to be covering another popular CNC project, a monogrammed door hanger. I've started this project with a rough sketch on paper. The door hanger will have a 16 inch diameter, include a small extrusion at the top with a hole to hang the monogram. The center will have a single letter and will add some vine embellishments as well. We'll be doing all of this in Carbide Create and I'm running version 3.1.6, which is in beta as of the making of this video. This will allow us to look at several of Carbide Create's features and use their Boolean operations once again. Let's get started. Starting in Carbide Create, I've set up a 32 by 32 inch workspace, half an inch thick. We're not going to make the monogram this large, but I want some extra space so that we can perform some of the operations. As I typically do, I've set the grid spacing to one quarter of an inch. Referencing our design, we'll start by creating a 16 inch circle to serve as the outer profile for our monogram. Our design sketch calls for a one inch border around the edge. We will therefore create a 14 inch circle to serve as the inside of our monogram. We can ensure that these two circles are centered by selecting both vectors, choosing alignment tools, and choosing to align the centers of the objects. Next, we'll create the extrusion at the top of the outside circle. You'll create a new circle along the top of the outer profile in the center so that it creates a shape above the circle roughly the size we want. Now we'll combine the extrusion with the outer profile by using the control key and selecting the outer circle, and then performing a Boolean union. A Boolean union creates a single shape by tracing around the perimeter of multiple selected objects. In this case, any part of the small circle we drew that's inside the outer profile will simply be ignored, and the outer profile will be extended around the extrusion. The Boolean union has combined our two shapes, removing the unnecessary geometry and leaving us with a single profile around our monogram. A final circle, drawn in the center of the extrusion, gives us a hole to hang the monogram from. Next, we'll need to use some advanced Boolean operations in order to create our inner shape. I'm going to start by selecting all my vectors and moving them towards the corner of the workspace, just to give myself some space to work. I'm also going to select the inner profile and use the Control c shortcut on the keyboard to create a copy of my inner profile, moving it to the side so we can work on it further. We'll use this profile as a guide to help size future elements. Let's start by adding our text. We'll create a new text element, set an appropriate size, enter a single letter to be our text, and finally choose an appropriate font. Once we have a font we like, we can move it into our profile and use the scaling tools to make the edges of our letters intersect the profile. For now, we won't worry that parts of the letters extend beyond the profile. Next, let's look at how we can add a vine embellishment to this. I've chosen to import an SVG of a vine shape that I already had. In another video, I'll cover how to convert JPEGs and other types of images into SVGs that you can use, but that would make this video unnecessarily complex. So for now, I'll use the one I already have. I'll continue by using the Scale, Rotate, and Move tools to move several copies of the vines into the profile so that they intersect the edge and the letter in a way I find interesting. I'll be careful to always leave a few points of contact between the vines, the letters, and the profile, just to make sure pieces aren't as likely to fall off.
once I'm happy with the overall placement, we'll now begin subtracting our outer shapes from our inner shapes. I'll select the outer profile and select one of the vines and perform a Boolean subtraction. I'll then select our outer profile and another vine, perform a Boolean subtraction. If the process creates islands like these, we'll leave them intact. We'll continue selecting the outer profile and the vines and performing subtractions until the vines are complete. Finally, we'll select the now complex outer profile and the letter and perform one final subtraction. At this point, I'm going to zoom in and just remove a few of the small details this has left, as I do not believe these will cut well. Once I'm happy with the overall shape, I'll do one final selection of all the vectors and group them. Our final task is to move our shape into position. We can't align the centers of our outer profile and our circle because we've changed the shape by adding the extrusion. Fortunately, before I started my design work, I left an unmodified copy of the circle right where we were going to have to move the final design. So being careful to select my design first, and then the circle, I can choose alignment tools and align centers. Finally, I'll zoom in, find a space that wasn't included in our final design, and use that to select the full circle and delete it. This leaves us with a single monogram shape. Now we're ready for toolpathing, and I'm going to show you a trick I use sometimes to help visualize my project. I'm going to draw a box around the entire geometry. The size is not important as long as it encompasses everything. Heading to the toolpath tab, I'm going to select all of my geometry and choose to do a contour pocket operation through the full depth of the material. You can see here the 1 8 inch end mill would take a long time to pocket this much area. However, when we run the show simulation, you can see that we have a visualized copy of our project that has removed all of the negative material. This would involve a lot more cutter time than is actually necessary, as we do not need to hollow out the areas, but simply create a profile. So let's hide the simulation and use one of the features in Carbide Create 316 that is brand new. Right clicking on group one, we're gonna create a new toolpath group. This allows us to actually turn off our first toolpath without removing it. I can select everything using the control button and clicking to remove the outer selection, the unnecessary box. And now I can create a contour outside profile cut that also goes all the way through. Profiling this new toolpath, uh, you can see we've run into an interesting limitation of Carbide Create. The preview is not always accurate. Small details can frequently be culled for performance reasons. When this happens, you don't need to panic. Let's head back to our design view and let's go ahead and remove that original toolpath. Unlike the preview, this blue line is accurate. If we zoom into some of those areas that showed uncut material, we can see that the toolpath does extend fully around this. The hanging hole looked like it had been completely missed, but it does have a toolpath assigned. The edge of the inner circle looked jagged and incomplete, but our toolpath is smooth and runs the full length of the curve. If this was my project, I would feel confident sending this to my cutter. So instead of ending on the simulation, we'll end on the design. A monogram door hanger featuring a door hanger extrusion, a letter in a font of our own choosing, and some vine embellishments around the edge. Thank you for watching, and if you found this video useful, please consider liking the video or subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it as I try to grow. If you have any questions on how you can apply these methods to your own project, or if you have ideas for other topics you'd like to see me cover, please leave them in a comment below.